Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back to WoW Classic TBC and our Blood Elf Rogue playthrough. Today we're starting into the Desolus. Uh, we're going to probably just take the long road down here and actually get to the camp. On the way, we could grab at least the Bone Collector. I think Bodyguard for Hire is an escort quest. And that just seems really, really boring. Um, so yeah, we'll grab the Bone Collector on our way down here, but then we will head directly to town. Escort another caravan. No, thank you. Uh, the Ghost of the Plains... Hmm. I think I just want to go to go to the town and get the quest out of there. That is what we're going to do. Where's the centaur quest? Oh, right here. Okay, yeah. That's what I was looking for. We'll grab uh, the centaur quest as well. And I don't think it really matters which ones we fight. I'll probably fight the guys over here, because they're going to be closer to the town and some of our turn-ins, and possibly closer to some of our other objectives. There's also a reagents vendor up here. But I think we're good right now on poison reagents. Yeah, we did a couple of Scarlet Monastery Cathedral runs. That got us uh, almost to level 40. And I did decide just to ditch everything else in the Arathi Highlands. So that we could come here while it's still within our level range. What's up? We're sitting on a gold mine here, I tell you. A gold mine. Kodo Bones will change the world forever. I have customers making furniture, music instruments, and even blasting powder out of them. There's a caravan that comes by and picks up my Kodo Bones and then sells them at the Shadow Prey Village. If you could travel to the Kodo Graveyard south of here and bring me ten Kodo Bones, I'll give you something in return. Keep it real. Uh, okay. Oh, they're pickups off the ground. Cool. Okay, let's come over here to the road. Maybe that will get us down to near where we can pick up the... Well, maybe we just go off-road. What's the harm? We could also open up some of these areas on the map so we know where places are at. I hope you guys are doing well today. And I should say thank you for clicking on the video and choosing to be here. I really do appreciate it. It's Tuesday today, maintenance day. The servers actually seem to have come back up at a normal time. Which is a big relief and a change from the other week when they definitely did not. I was kind of hoping we would get an announcement of when they plan the pre-patch for Wrath, but we haven't gotten any annou announcements about Classic in a bit. And I'm hoping it's not something that they completely spring on us. How awkward would it be to wake up one Tuesday and find out that the Fresh Start servers have gone up and not have been able to make any plans or anything like that? I, I don't assume they would do that, but as the weeks progress and we don't have a timetable announced by them, I get more and more nervous. Uh, catch of the day. Talk to Jarzillan at Shadow Prey Village and then bring Nataka Longhorn to Blood Belly Fish. Is this something that we're going to be able to buy at the village? Because I can't fish. I hope the game knows that. The Kolkar are not the only centaur of Desolus. Many clans wander these dry plains, fighting and dying against one another. And it is good that they fight amongst themselves, for they are strong and brutal. If the centaur unite against us, they would be a fierce foe. We must deal with them before they unite. Your first task is to dis disrupt the Kolkar clan. Do this by killing its leader, Kaz Despera. The Kolkar village is northeast of here. Alright. Oh, these quests are gray-green. The Centaur Clans rule the Waste of Desolus. If united, they would be a terrible force. It is then good that the Centaur Clans are not united, but instead bicker and war amongst themselves. Uh, can I take both of these? 
And then I just need to move the progress bar of one of them, right? Slay their most hated rival, the Magrum. After you earn the respect of the Gelkis, meet with the Gelkis Shaman. Okay, so yeah, we have to move it to, uh, to, to friendly. So yeah, I think I said, I think I'll just fight whatever clan. Yeah, who are these guys? Slay Gelkis. So that would make us ha a Magrum alliance. And that's probably what we're going to do just for convenience sake. Uh, okay, so... Bring eight Ghostoplasm and the Crate of Ghost Magnets. Oh, right. Uh, I don't care for this quest either. It's like a lot of running back and forth. But maybe we could be pairing it with this. But it is just us running guys back and forth. I'm not going to do that right now. I like the experience buff because it kind of lets me pick and choose things that I don't really want to do. And I feel like that's a better way to play a game. When you can look at a quest that you know kind of sucks. And you can just say to yourself, yeah, I, I don't want to do that right now. And I don't really want to do that at all. And then the game provides you with tons of other stuff to do. That are not that one specific quest. I really do like that. Oh, we uh, ticked this one off by collecting its bones. Yeah, it gives me more freedom coming into an area like this when I know that there are quests that I'm not going to want to do, but I know that it's okay that I don't do them. Whereas, I've avoided this zone before because I knew there were things here that I, I didn't enjoy doing, and I would have to do everything if I chose to engage with the zone at all. Uh, let's see, the, everything's kind of guarded here. Yeah, we only have to pick the stuff up off the ground, but we have these buzzards to contend with. I was kind of hoping if we got away, maybe we have a minute where we can stealth right after we pick it up. I wonder if that's something we can do. We can certainly find out. So we're going to collect this one, then I'm going to tap Stealth as soon as we have it. That actually worked. That actually worked. Oh, and uh, a couple of you guys let me know, I should be opening with Cheap Shot from Stealth. Uh, the biggest reason I can see to do this is that it awards two combo points. It's also going to stun the target for four seconds. Now, that being said, it costs 60 energy, so... We're going to need that 4 seconds to actually regenerate our energy to be able to do anything besides getting a slice and dice up. But yeah, we'll do the 2 shot, uh, 2 points here, and then those 2 points go right into slice and dice. And as someone pointed out, there's probably not going to be really many enemies we come up against, besides like bosses, that are going to be up longer than a 2 point slice and dice is going to be active. So yeah, thank you for that. Um, I knew that there was some ability that was supposed to award 2 combo points. Oh, that sucked. Let's just go ahead and vanish out of this one. Uh, but I didn't know where it was, or if I had gotten it yet, or what it was called. I remember looking for it once before, uh, before the break. And, uh, just completely forgot about it. So yeah, thank you for that. It's gonna make our quality of life a lot better, I think. I'm going to let the cooldown on stealth tick down here so that we can uh, collect this and pop back into stealth. Should be good. See, that time nobody spawned. Look at this guy. Jeez. I want to see one of these alive, like walking around.
Well, hello there. Oh, a couple of things I completely forgot about. Firstly, thank you so much, Stan Cosman, for sending us the Dazzling Longsword. Yeah, you probably noticed. What's that shiny sword you have equipped? It's the Dazzling Longsword. It has Crusader on it. No big deal. Uh, thanks for that. I really appreciate that. That's going to be a good offhand for quite some time, I think. So, yeah, really awesome. Definitely appreciate that. Oh, didn't quite get the stealth there. Yep, that's pretty nice. And then we need to just auto attack for a minute. We'll get our energy back and then we can go back into our usual rupture. The only thing missing is like we don't get the Garot damage over time. So, you know, it's kind of a trade-off. It's kind of a trade-off. I kind of like having both of the damage over times up. Having Garot and then rupture. But we'll see. We'll play with Cheap Shot for a bit and see how we feel about it. It does have that nice 4 second stun, but I do feel like a lot of that we spend getting our energy back. Then again, I don't know the energy cost. Let's see, the energy cost... Well, Geralt is 50 energy. Yeah, it's 50 energy. It doesn't have the stun, but it's dealing damage. So... Let's talk to this guy and see what this quest is about. I don't... I'm not familiar with this one. There's a valley to the southeast, the Valley of Bones, haunted by Magrum Ghost. Sounds scary, doesn't it? Well, think how scary it is to the Magrum. If we captured ghost energy from that place, I bet it'd be worth a pretty... P be worth plenty to those centaurs. Why would it be worth it to them if it's something that they're, like, afraid of? What am I missing? Here, take this crate of ghost magnets. If you place one between the two big skeletons in the valley, the dead goliaths then Ghost will wander to it. Oh, this sounds complicated. Place one between the two big skeletons and and the Ghost will wander to it. Distance yourself, take out the Ghost, and get the Ghost Plasm. That's what will sell to the Magrum. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I've never done that one before. Hmm. It's in kind of a weird spot without Questy telling me where to pick it up. It's very possible that every time I've quested here, I've never found this guy. That's actually my favorite thing about Questy, is that I have found so many quests that I have never seen before. Uh, because the, the pickups are called out on the map. This will be our last Kodo Skull. Uh, should we go turn this in? Yeah, I feel like we should probably just run and turn this in. What else do we have for them? Just the Magrum stuff, right? And the leader. Ghost of Plasm's down here. Where is the leader that we need to find? Who was he? Right here. Maybe we do need to do some of this stuff before we head over to the village. Let's go turn this in to see if it chains in anything, and then we'll go try to find this guy's head. Whoops. Forgot you were aggressive.
Kind of looking forward to questing more on the western side of the zone because from what I remember part of it actually has some foliage as you get closer to the coast and the biome changes slightly. And I always appreciate zones that have multiple biomes within the zone. Uh, that's it. Just a one and done. And we got a stamina and spirit neck. Uh, that, well, I mean, we got a two agility neck right now. Maybe we just take the stamina and spirit and call it an upgrade. Let's do that. It's more health and more regen. The two agility is probably not doing a lot for us, if we're uh, being honest. Apparently I'd have to find that caravan, even if I did want to escort them, it's apparently not as cut and dry as they're parked somewhere and waiting for an escort. Seems like they're pathing. Which is a little weird, actually. Is Desolus one of the zones that they added some quests to in the Burning Crusade? I know Dust Wallow they added quite a bit. At least for the Horde side, they did. Uh, so we're looking for Kaz Despa. Oh boy, okay, let's see. Or Khan Despa, even. Uh, he's somewhere close. Is he in the back of this tent? He's in the back of that tent. Uh, we'll do Flurry and Evasion because we have uh, ticked off this guy. He's not very happy. There we go. That was easy enough. Let's go get this one turned in. A lot of running to start off. I kind of knew it was going to be that way, but... Sometimes that's what it's like getting into a new zone. You have a, a, the first handful of quests are sometimes a lot of running around, or a lot of back and forth, or it just takes you a while to get to the quest hub. It always feels a little slow when you're starting a new area. And will I put will I put poisons on my weapons in this episode? Uh, yes, I will. I will do that uh, next time we're gonna fight some stuff. I'll put some poisons on. I will actually remember to rogue semi properly, and we'll do some elixirs as well.
blood and thunder. Well done. The swift act against the Kolkar is an effective show of strength, and strength is what the centaur understand best. The death of the Kolkar leader will not only disrupt the clan, but give pause to the others. Now that you scare the centaur clans, it's time to bleed them. When traveling desolate, hunt centaur. I don't care which clan you hunt, just gather ears. A horde of ears. By weakening their numbers, you will weaken their resolve and stamp out any thoughts of expansion. Alright, we will pair that with when we choose to grind the guys down here. At least that gives us another reason to kill them. Like, part of me doesn't really want to grind out all the rep. So, but the other part of me could... We can get the ears. Now look at this, though. It's a gray quest. Yeah, we're not even going to get a bunch of experience for it. Maybe I'll fight these guys when I have kill, when I, or when I have uh, rested ex XP. I don't know. Part of me just doesn't really want to do it. Part of me just does not really want to do it. Especially seeing that the ears is already a gray quest. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we need to maybe be careful about how we make our way through here. Perhaps I can go up and around this hill. That worked out. Alright, yeah, we're going to make our way over to the village and uh, pick up things over there and see what they want us to do. I don't know how much there's going to be here for us to do. We'll do what we can. We'll at least hit level 40. And then I think we'll go back to, to Stranglethorn for a little bit. We have some stuff there we can do now that's within range. And then I want to go to Swamp of Sorrows for at least a little bit. Oh, see, the biome changed a little bit here. From like gray moon rock to sandy desert-ish, more natural seeming environment. And the skybox is different as well. We have different lighting effects here. Very cool. Yeah, see we can fight the guys here. They're level 33. Yeah, so we could do that. They'd be worth kill experience, but I feel like it's it would probably be only something I would do while I had rested XP to pair up with the... Joyous Journeys buff. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, see, I had a feeling it, it kind of got vegetation at some point. Awesome. Very, very cool. I haven't seen this part of the zone in a long time. I don't know if we've ever quested out of this uh, little village at all on any classic playthrough that I've done. We haven't that I can remember, unless somebody uh, can pull something out of the archive. I don't think we've ever taken a character over to over to Shadow Prey Village here. Oh man. Cool, cool. Alright, it looks pretty cool as well. I like these buildings. I think they have these in the hinterlands as well. Alright, is there a flight point? Yeah, there is. Let's go grab that before we do anything else so that I don't forget. And then we'll start grabbing some of these quests. I like how the flight point is at the end of the dock. I'm assuming there's not a boat that takes us anywhere from here. I, I've never heard of a boat coming here. What you looking for? Clam bait. You have the look of a fisherman. Wrong. I love the, to fish, been fishing all my life. The best bait to use is soft-shelled clam meat. The fish just can't resist, you know what I mean? Not really. Up north you will find a wrecked ship off the coast. Soft-shelled clams are littered throughout the area. If you bring me back 10 of the, of the soft-shelled clam meat, I will give you something in return. Okay, a uh, leather belt. Not going to be something we use. Other fish to fry. Maybe you heard or maybe you haven't. My crew and I was out fishing near R Ranazjar Isle, north of the wrecked ship off the coast up north. We used to fish there all the time. Now all I do is think of a way to seek revenge for my fallen comrades. The Naga attacked us one morning, killing everyone except me. My conscience can't handle the guilt, rogue. 
I need you to go and fry them naga for me. I'll make the effort worth your while. Stay away from the voodoo. All right, cool. Naga kill quest. Ooh, they're all the way up there too. I wonder if we can run along the coast or if we have to take an interior land route. Oh, we have a tauren over here. Talga Wisemane. The Burning Blade possesses the Demon Box. Oh. Within it lies the powerful Hand of Aruxos. The Burning Blade uses it to open demonic portals at Manorak Coven. We must stop the tide of demons entering our world. Use this demon pick on the Red Crystal in Thunder Axe Fortress to gain access to the Demon Box. Use this demon pick on the Red Crystal. Okay. There's a Red Crystal... We shall meet Understood. Again. Do we want to set our hearthstone here? Uh, yes, I think that would be a good idea because currently we are set in Gromgull. I'm very grateful there's an actual innkeeper here. Greetings. Let's actually successfully do it this time. There we go. This is now our home. Let's do some other stuff too before we head out. We'll do elixirs. Uh, we will do poisons. We need to make some. And uh, we can eat some buff food as well. I guess we, yeah. We have better elixirs now and better food also. Uh, another gift, which I appreciate. I think for now we'll just let this one wear out since we just applied it, but we can... Ooh, it's a grilled squid. I have never seen this food before. Um, delicious. That'll give us some additional agility. It's funny that it's not the food buff icon. Alright, let's see here. Um, part of me wants to try to run up the coast. Part of me knows that there's probably an interior route to get where we're going. Let's let's try to go up the coast. Let's just kind of scope it out and see what it's like. Uh, we would be swimming. Do I want to swim all the way up the coast? Not really. Is there anything else I can really do? Huh, let's, let's try to find an interior land route, okay? That'll also open up the map a little bit. I like revealing the maps, even if we don't have to go into those areas for much. But it looks like if we go along the coast, we will have to swim the whole way. This doesn't seem like the best way to go either. <laughs> this seems uh, specifically for trying to get to Maradon and maybe not for... We're going to try to sneak out through here uh, if that ends up being possible.
Well, this is not good. Uh, this is probably going to get us killed, actually. We need some of these guys to drop off of us. Like, right away. Yeah, this was a uh, terrible route to go. And if I had been more familiar with the zone, we would not have come this way. We probably would have just swam up the coast. Uh, now I'm thinking that that's actually what we were meant to do, because we definitely weren't meant to come this way. I don't see a road out here. I mean, we can come out here and go to the north, I think, but... Yes, we're going to be swimming down the coast to get back. Well, that's an interesting tower here in front of us. I don't know what that is or why it is. Wait, 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 wait. I think we saw this once. Maybe we were here on our human priest. Yeah, we were. Scepter of Light. Right, okay. There is a quest to pick up over here. There's a couple of quests. And I, I do remember being in this area on our human priest back in, uh, back in classic vanilla. Very cool area. Oh, his quest is also really low level. Let's just have a look at it. The Burning Blade in Thunder Axe Fortress to the east is rumored to have acquired the Scepter of Light from the Naga. Legend tells that the Scepter is able to sink entire cities under the Great Seas. The Burning Blade must not be allowed to possess such power. To that end, you must retrieve the Scepter yourself. It is held by a Burning Blade Seer who studies the Scepter from atop one of the Thunder Axe Watchtowers. Yeah, I remember this quest. Uh, level 33 is still green, but we're going to hit 40 here in a minute, and then it probably isn't going to be... I needed to come here before doing a bunch of Scarlet Monastery Cathedral runs. That is what I needed to do. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what happened. What a cool little area, though. I really do like this part of Desolus a lot. Maybe we should come down here and grab this quest as well. Claim Rackmore's treasure. Uh, I vaguely remember something about this happening out on the island. And uh, I think there's Naga out on the island too. Yeah, plenty of Naga out there. Let's come grab the quest. I, I don't really recall the specifics of it. I remember having to look it up when we did it on the priest. The thing is, about Cheap Shot, is it's really great. I love getting the two combo points. Don't get me wrong. Slice and Dice is usually up the full duration of the fight, even with one combo point. The stun is good because, you know, they're not hitting us for four seconds. That being said, we dodge a lot anyway. I'm just trying to weigh, like, the, the trade-offs, because I, I like getting the damage over time... I like getting the damage over time a lot. 
the stacking the two damage over time abilities is kind of like what I've enjoyed a lot about the class, so... I don't- I think for longer fights, like if we were talking about like doing a dungeon, like I- I should have been using Cheap Shot when we were doing uh, a Scarlet Cathedral, but I hadn't read that feedback yet when I recorded that. So we weren't. Rackmore's log tells of how his ship was sailing for Feathermoon Stronghold when it was attacked by seafaring creatures. To prevent his treasure from falling into enemy hands, he hid his chest on Ranjar Isle. To open the chest requires two keys, a silver and a gold. These keys were lost, but the keys and the chest are found. Treasure awaits. That's an elite. I don't want to fight an elite sea giant. Okay, so the keys are held by the dry snap pincers. The box, oh, the golden key ha is held by a Slitherbane Sea Witch. Okay, but these guys have the silver key. This is what I didn't understand when I was doing it on the priest. I thought the Naga were going to drop both keys, uh, but they don't, and we weren't using Questy back then. So it took me a long time and a bit of research to figure this one out. Uh, I guess we can do this. We're also looking for soft-shelled clams in the area, so as we fight these guys hoping for a key to drop, we need to be looking on the ground for these clams here. That being said, yeah, my favorite type of quest. Look how slow we are. If we're stealth and underwater, I'm never going to catch anything. I don't know if we're going to be stealthing a lot down here. Yeah, see, we don't even use up the full duration of Slice and Dice off of one combo point. So, yeah, I think I'm going to stick with Garot for now. And then when we do group content, I'll probably then go with Cheap Shot. Uh, where is this one at? The Clams... Soft-shelled clam. Oh, we need to open it. Right, right, right. There we go. Okay. Makes sense. Approaching from above is uh, probably preferable. Than trying to swim after them and catch them that way. These are some of the creepiest uh, creatures in the game, in my opinion. These upright crustaceans. Uh, like bipedal crustaceans, they just really, really creep me out. And the bigger they are, the creepier they are. Oh, these guys will drop the clam meat too if we if we kill them. I'd like to pick it all up, but we'll see what the drop rate's like.
Uh, we need to get him to follow us to the top here before we drown. I jump like that, as stupid as it is, to keep my character's head out of the water, because if I angle the camera where I want to look, the character will typically end up dipping its head under the water. And I definitely want to be getting oxygen the entire time at the top. That's why I'm holding my spacebar key. I know it's not really immersive, um, but it, it's kind of something that I do. I, I jump a lot in the water to be able to manipulate my camera uh, while not making my character just face plant down into the water. like. Yeah, see I press forward, and then I want to look down, but then the character just kind of like dives in. So often I'll just jump out. If I want to look down, I will, I will just hold my jump key. Yeah, chasing them in stealth, really annoying. <laughs> it is really annoying if we end up behind them and have to chase them underwater in stealth when we're already so slow and they are just naturally speedy underwater. And uh, how long will I go for this quest? I don't really know. I'm I'm giving it a shot. We'll, we'll kill a handful more and see if it drops. We'll kill them while we're out here doing this other quest. So how many do we have here? Let's open these all up. We're at five, so if I complete this, I'm probably not gonna fight many more of these guys uh, if we've already completed the collection quest. Yeah, I really can't be in stealth here. It's too slow. It's too slow and it's not impactful enough on the combats for me to want to keep trying to do it. Oh, I just realized that these little air vents are going to give us oxygen back, aren't they? I'm pretty sure they do. Let's go see. How freaking cool is that? That's really cool. Are these all over the place in quest areas underwater and I just don't notice? Or are these unique to here? Because this is a really cool idea. Uh, I absolutely love it. And I'm going to kick myself if those are all over the place in the world where there are underwater quests and I've just never noticed. I will kick myself. Because yeah, that is super cool. Hey, there's this there's the silver key. That's perfect. Let's grab this guy and then we'll pop open what we have and see how many more we need. Three more. All right.
I will say more of those events would have been more helpful, though. They're, I'm glad they have the one. I think there's one on this other side as well. But uh, we could we could have stood to have a few more. A few more would have been great. We can start heading north now. We don't need to be in this area anymore. Uh, we do need to make our way up to where the Naga are at. And ultimately, we need to make our way all the way over to this other island. Which is going to be quite a bit of swimming. This guy's basically guarding this item. We're probably going to end up having to fight him for it. And just one more, and this one will be done. I kind of want to fight these guys on land as much as possible, so I'm going to fight in and around the islands, I think. Yep, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the islands. Uh, these guys must have pretty good stealth detection. Maybe the poison on us is popping us out of stealth. That could be an issue. Let's see if that's what's happening. Yes. Yes, the poison that we have on us is going to pop us out of stealth, so... No stealthing for the next 8 seconds. Now the oracles we don't need for the kill quest, but they do have a chance to drop the golden key, so no reason to avoid them. Oh, and speaking of the golden key... Yeah, so there we go. Okay, that just leaves the kill quest. Let's head out to the main island here. We will fight everybody on the island, and we will open the chest with the keys that we've acquired. Uh, because yeah, the chest is out here on this island.
we could fight a little bit down here around this uh, air geyser, bubbly fissure. Let's do that. Let's work on the kill quest a little bit on these guys. Uh, the island ones are going to be kind of limited. I, I don't remember how many are on the island, but not enough to fully satiate the kill quest, I don't believe. Uh, you will bleed out. Maybe you'll pull this other guy to us. That's perfect, perfect. We That actually works out. And yeah, there's level 40. It's awesome. Unlike a lot of classes, we don't really get anything big at level 40. We don't unlock a new armor class. Or anything like that, so... Uh, if we go into our talents... Yeah, not really a big level there either. We're just going to put another point into weapon expertise, I think. We could grab Adrenaline Rush, but we can grab it next level too. I mean... We're going to grab Vitality, Adrenaline Rush... And then I don't know what all, so let's let's grab Adrenaline Rush now. We'll circle back to get our second point in weapon expertise. Where do I want to put this? Uh, I need a cooldown or a keybind here. I haven't been using Backstab, that's true. Let's put it there for now. Yeah, backstab, backstab requires daggers, so... There will be no backstabbing on our sword spec rogue. The box is over here. Chest opens to reveal Rackmore's treasure. Uh, neither of which item we can use. And I don't think there are even many on the island that are for the kill quest. I think most of the guys we need are swimming out. Uh, we need Myrmidons, Naga, and Sorceresses. Razor Tails, Tide Hunters. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to have more luck just kind of. Going back the way we came, right? Yeah, let's do that. There's really not anything else on the island that we need. Um, so yeah. Let's head back this way. We could probably fight most of them near the coast if we really want to. That was a misclick. <laughs> Bye, Adrenaline Rush. It was nice to uh, click you for the first time out of combat. Maybe I should do this. That might work out a little better. Come over here and check our little island. Maybe we can grab some guys over here. Oh, I see the oracle that we don't really need.
It's funny that uh, Geralt wouldn't go off in that situation, but Cheap Shot did. Does Cheap Shot not require us to be behind the target, just in stealth? So maybe Cheap Shot will be our go-to when, when Garot isn't, isn't going off, you know, when we can't quite get behind them. In that moment when they're revealing our stealth, uh, our stealth, we can maybe get a Cheap Shot in like I did there. That would be cool, uh, if possible. This would make a nice, uh, nice thumbnail here, look at that. Quite a sight. We have all the Myrmidons that we need. We need Naga and Sorceresses. So now that I've noticed these air vents, I am starting to kind of see them all over the place. It even gives us a couple of seconds after we leave the air bubbles where we still have the buff and we're not losing breath. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it works for me. Kind of getting worried about finding the sorceresses we need. They seem kind of rare. Yeah, I mean, looking at their spawn points, uh, I'd say that, yes, they're kind of rare, aren't they? Well, that's really something. Hmm. Apparently, this could take us a while. 
Should I kill some of these so that maybe they respawn as sorceresses? I mean, it might not be a bad idea. At least we only need five of them. We don't need eight. Yeah, I don't really know what to think of this situation. Uh, there's like... Seven spawn points possible. And they're all incredibly spread out. And I wish I had been making these guys a priority. Like, long before now. There's also just like types that spawn that we don't need. Like, we don't need warriors, we don't need oracles. And they're just, uh, they're taking up spawns. Taking up spawns. Myrmidons. Oracles. Yeah, I'm not really happy about this. <laughs> this is, uh... This is one of those annoying things that happens. Yeah, we need to kill five, but we're lucky to find, you know, one up at a time anywhere. And it's like a double smack in the face for me. Like, when we're running around, that's one thing. But now I'm swimming around? Which is slower, and the visibility sucks. The visibility sucks. Uh, you're a Naga. Yeah, I wonder about this. I might be doing a little bit of editing here. Well, it took a little bit of time, but... This is our last Sorceress. And with that done, uh, besides the Scepter of Light, there's not really... Uh, we have two quests over there. I, I think we do need to head that way, unfortunately. I was thinking we'd be able to hearth uh, about this time. But maybe we should go try to knock out these two quests over here in the Thunder Axe Fortress. After we get back to shore in 12 minutes from now. I don't think sprint adds any speed to our swimming, but it makes me feel like I'm trying to do everything I can to get back to shore fast. The Scepter of Light is still green, so we, we might be able to get full experience from it. Assuming we don't level again before turning it in. These are the lucky groups of Thunder Lizards that have found a more hospitable area to reside in. It'd be cool to have a Warcraft bestiary. If they had good writers that could write, like, good little snippets of, uh, facts or lore about creatures, that would be really cool. Kind of like a monster manual type of thing. But again, they'd, they'd have to have good writers, you know, whose hearts were in it. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, that hasn't always been the case with WoW and the state of its writing. I feel like if we were ever going to get a monster manual or something like that, it probably would have happened a long time ago. Alright, how to get in here? I guess we can just sneak in the front door. Uh, one of the towers here, we're going to have to go up to get an item off of somebody. 
Yeah, literally they're just holding the scepter of light, so... I feel like this would be a good place to initiate stealth. Don't even. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, there's nothing up here anyway. We have to go higher? We have to go higher. Everyone's dead anyway. Everyone is dead. We need this guy. Burning Blade Seer. So, uh, maybe we'll be camping him out. The one fell sworn just vanished. I don't know if there are other towers with other seers in them, but this is the only tower that I can visualize. So yeah, I think this is the only place we can go. Uh, we could do the stuff inside first. That being said, we know we have competition for this quest, so I don't know if it's really smart to leave this little area. All right. Well, he's vanished. That's that's a good start. Maybe there will be some guys we can at least fight down below to uh kill time. We need to keep our eyes peeled though for any and all competition here. I'd really rather not wait for this guy to respawn twice. These guys are not even worth kill experience, so yeah, not really a point to fight them at all. Flayed Dem- Oh! A level 25 quest? Uh, that's probably not going to be something that we can do at this point. The torn skin smells rotten and is remarkably pliable for something that appears to be dry and fragile. As you unroll it, you can clearly see the red markings of some kind of language on the side. At the bottom of the skin is a very clear symbol that you guess is a signature of some kind. Perhaps something Marin could tell you about. Uh, what level did that come in at? I have no idea. I can't see it in my log because of the tiny, tiny writing. Is this it? The Corrupter? Yes. Okay, so... We have to go turn that back into him, which is also going to stop me from being able to hurt out of here. Fun times. This guy is not back yet. Typical. And there we go. I did invite this person to the group so that we could both get our items. And not have to compete, because they definitely came up there and camped out. So that's done. Let's sneak our way in here and we can hope that uh, this guy is up. Don't mind us. Just coming to kill your leader, no big deal. Oh, this is uh, not a kill quest, we just have to Click this. Oh, with the pick. That's right. That's right, the pick. On the Alliance side, I feel like we fought somebody and then there was a kill quest. Or an escort quest, maybe. Oh, we do have to fight this guy, though. He has the demon box? Okay. Makes sense. Okay, I think we are done here. I'm glad this adept just kind of sat there and watched all that happen and didn't give a crap. It's always been hilarious to me like how inclusive all of the 
the evil factions in the game are. Like, there's always humans and orcs working side by side for a common cause, and goblins and elves. And yeah, all the evil factions, like these guys, the Twilight Hammer, the Burning Blade, like, they all are much more inclusive. And then there's the Horde and the Alliance, who for years and years and years, even though they're forced to work with each other over and over again, they still have this, like, deep-seated hatred for each other. It's really telling that, like, we're a part of the factions that are just, like, supremely racist, whereas all these other factions are willing to accept anybody. It's just something I always find kind of comical. But we're, we're supposed to be the good guys, though. Think about that for a while. All right, we'll come down here and turn this in, and then we are going to hearth back to uh, back to Shadow Prey Village. Oh no! <laughs> uh, we have too many disparate quests to turn in. Ah, uh, there's things turning in all over the place. We got to run back out here and talk to this guy and give him the give him the uh, hand of light or scepter of light or whatever it was. Oh, it's been so much running around. It's been nice to come here, but ultimately, this is a big zone with lots of running. And uh, I think Swamp Asaros is going to be a lot different. It's going to be a, it's a smaller zone. There will probably be less running back and forth. Uh, we'll have to see, of course. It's going to be a bit of a longer episode today, even with uh, some of the edits that I've done. Hope you guys don't mind that very much. I start to get antsy. Anything over an hour and a couple minutes sitting in, in my chair, I, I get to, I get a little antsy. My, my body wants to get up and move around. Uh, I have ADD, so really focusing on something for more than an hour straight gets uh, a little bit difficult. I start to feel anxious, like there's something else that I need to get done, and typically there is. Um, <laughs> so, when it gets... And I also have this thing where because of those other factors, I start to lose my patience with uh, things after about an hour or so. Start to have less patience uh, than I would like to have, let's say that. Which is why I try to keep things right at that, that hour mark. Well met. The elusive scepter of light, your acquisition of it has removed a grave threat to the world. Well done, Rogue. What would you have done if we hadn't come along? <laughs> Someone else would have done it. I entrust you with the gem of the serpent. Place this gem on the serpent statue's hand on Razjar Island, a small island northwest of here. Placing it will summon the one who protects the Book of the Ancients. This book contains the secrets of the Naga, secrets that have been kept for centuries. Bring this book to me and we will learn much about our scale, the foes. Be careful. That sounds great. I am going to take a break here. I want to do this quest. The, the quest sounds really cool. I want to take a look at the book, see if there's any text in it we can actually read. But it's going to take us all the way out to the island. We're going to have to come back. We're going to go down here. We're going to get all this stuff turned in. So, and then we have also, we also have to do, wasn't there a portal quest? I thought we had something to do in the, in the Manor Rock Coven. I thought we had a, uh, we had picked up a quest to take care of, but now I'm not, I'm not seeing anything. But yeah, I do need to take a break here, guys. Thank you for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Especially if you're still hanging out. You are a legend. Take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we'll see you back here again sometime soon. Bye now.